Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So this video you're about to see on YouTube is a free preview of my course on Timeleaf and the Spring Framework, how they work together. If you like what you see in this series, head over to my website at springframework.guru and you can learn more about the full course. Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this module, we're gonna take a look at using the Timeleaf tags to replace some of our static content. And by static content, I mean the, the CSS files, the JavaScript files, and any style sheets that we have in it. So what we're going to do is set it up so that we will use the CDN resource when we're viewing the browser, but we'll use resources rendered by Tomcat and Spring MBC when we're viewing under the web application running through the Tomcat server. So let's uh, dig in and take a look at IntelliJ right now. Okay, so this is our index page. We're going to take a look at this and set it up so that we render the, the resources through Spring MVC rather than the CDN. So let's take a look at first the Bootstrap CSS. And what I've done here is I've gone in and under static, static is the directory that Spring Boot is going to provide for static resources, our CSS and whatnot. So I've gone in and added in a distribution for bootstrap so it, we can see that here on, on the left hand side so we are interested in the same file the bootstrap men css i'm using the same version of bootstrap but rather than getting it from C cdn i'm going to source it in myself and the way we want to do that is up on line seven here we're going to change that and we are going to add a time leaf tag of href and now we're going to use a time leaf command to say replace this with CSS, yeah, CSS. Three three dot four dash D I S T slash bootstrap bootstrap dot min dot CSS. And what this is going to tell Timeleaf to do is to replace this with that value. And we can do the same thing here for the JavaScript resource. And we are going to use th colon source. And we want to do the at sign again. And this time we're going to say js slash, let me double check what I called this, jquery dash two dot one dot four dot min js and that's the minified version of jquery and this again is going to tell bootstrap to replace this value with with that so let's uh, take a look and make sure this is working and i'm going to restart our application server so that's restarted let's take a look over at chrome and i'm going to refresh this and now we got something different so let's take a look at the, the source, see what's going on here. So I miss, misspelled something. But you can see how Timeleaf has changed this reference. So I double check, check that. Okay, so I got bootstrap 314.dist and then I missed the, the nested folder for CSS. And I double check, make sure that we can get to jQuery. That jQuery is coming up okay. So let's restart. Down Spring Boot again. Refresh the page. Now we have the Bootstrap source coming down. We can show you this. So there's my Bootstrap CSS. So that link is resolving okay. The JavaScript's resolving okay. So you can see this is the HTML being produced by Spring MVC. You can see how the CDN resource is gone now for both Bootstrap and jQuery, and it's been replaced with the value we gave in the time leaf tag. So, and if I bring this up under Chrome, this is rendering the file. Let me show you this. See the, the file, when I render from the file, it's showing the CDN resources. I'm not going through Spring MVC with this version. I'm going directly from the file and view, viewing the source of that. But 
when I view the source for what's been rendered by C Spring MVC, it's now different. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to exclude this. I'm going to show you another tag called remove. I'm going to say all. The remove tag has some options, but we're going to do all. And now I want to do a link. And I want to say yeah, sign bracket. And I, I've moved in this script over to a custom CSS file. So this is the same style commands and a custom CSS file. So I'm going to say slash CSS slash custom.css. And I also need to say that this is about style sheet. So I'm going to copy that, plunk that there, and close that tag. So what I've done here is I'm telling Timeleaf to use my custom CSS file and hide the CSS that I've added to the header. So let me bounce Spring Boot. Spring Boot is back up and running. Toggle over. Refresh this. Looks the same. Good. View the page source. Now we can see that style is gone from our header. It's no longer there and we have a link to the style sheet, our custom CSS. This is quite a bit different from what we see when we're rendering via the file versus coming out of Spring MVC. So these are, are two different things. Okay, so in this module, I showed you how we can set up time leaf tags and those tags are gonna replace content on the template. So now we're getting two, two distinctly different versions of the file. One, we're, we're getting the, the file displayed in the browser. If we go in and click and say view the file in the browser, we'll get that exact file coming up. Now the second one, we got the time leaf tags in there and the time leaf ta templating engine is replacing content of those tags. So in one, one section we're saying, instead of the CDN resources, give me the stuff from this path, the static resources path that Spring Boot has set up for us. And then the other one I'm saying, show me this style sheet. And when I render under Spring Boot and Tomcat going through the whole dispatcher servlet and Spring MVC, to do that and the time leaf templating engine. But when you time leaf, when you get down to the style sheet, I want you to completely hide it. So we're showing a link to the style sheet when we come out of Spring MVC, but we're hiding this other section. So I've just introduced you to a couple minor time leaf tags, but the, the big thing I wanted to get across in this module was now time leaf is dynamically changing that. So we're no longer, we're just, we're not just taking that HTML content and providing it to the request, we're now modifying it as we go through the templating engine. And that modification occurs when the time leaf templating engine hits those time leaf tags. Those time leaf tags say, hey, I want you to do something. I want you to replace this content with something different. And this is just the beginning of what we're gonna be doing. So as we move forward, we're gonna be replacing more and more content till the point where this is just a structure and a lot of the content that's going to be displayed on the page is dynamic content that we are providing from the Spring MVC controller.